Ooh, Woo. that one stung a little bit. <laughs> Damn. Hey everyone, I'm Ethan. And I'm Jesse. And today we'll be taking a look at the Mega Wheels S10 scooter. Next on Now Let's Review. Now before we get started, we just wanna let you know that Mega Wheels did send us this scooter for review, but that will not influence what we have to say in this review. And all of our thoughts and opinions about this scooter are going to be purely based on our experience with it and the company. Right off the bat, before we go any further, something I wanna mention about the company rather than the product itself is that uh, they make fake reviews on their website. Uh, I sent them some pictures from when we were filming the video for this scooter, uh, you know, to use on social media or on their website somewhere for design purposes to have some cool content to feature. A couple weeks later, I'm writing the script for this review video. I was just scrolling through their website to see what I could find and I stumbled across two reviews uh, that were featuring the pictures that I sent into them that we took while we're filming. So, so Ethan, did you write a review on their website? I actually did not, believe it or not. Wow, so uh, how did how did anyone else get the picture of you with the scooter? Amazing that they just happened to film, uh, you know. I didn't know we had a doppelganger. I, I guess that also lives- also bought the scooter at the same time. Who lives in a town that looks exactly like the town we filmed this video in. What are the chances of that? It's wild. So yeah, wow. you can see, look, there's me in that first picture right there. Uh, so yeah, that's not great. And then these other pictures in this next review are also pictures that we took while we were filming this video. Uh, so obviously, if you haven't gathered by now, these are fake reviews, uh, which leads me to believe that most or all of the reviews on their website are fake. So do not trust any of the four and five star reviews that you're seeing on the Mega Wheels website. With all that being said, let's talk about a real review of this scooter. Let's begin. So this is a pretty simple scooter. There really isn't a lot to talk about here. Uh, the Mega Wheels S10 is a budget scooter. And as such, it lacks features and performance. It has an aluminum alloy frame with a thin wooden platform topped with black grip tape. Now this would be a pretty great design if the grip tape weren't sticking off the edge uh, both on the front and the back. It's really not the end of the world. It's just annoying that, you know, these little fit and finish issues, uh, these things seem to be easily solvable um, and you'd end up with a slightly better looking scooter. Overall, the design isn't that bad. No, the design's honestly fine. I, I like the color scheme, the black with the natural wood and then the little bit of green on the logo. Mm -hmm. Black and white and green are uh, clearly favorites. things that we like. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't knock it on the design too much. It's not a bad looking scooter. The S10 comes with solid rubber wheels, um, which is strange for some people to hear um, because they're used to pneumatic tires on their bikes and on their cars and even on their scooters. Let me tell you from experience, um, I've owned a Show Me Me electric scooter and I got a flat tire on it and that was the worst tire change I have ever gone through because I didn't take it anywhere. I just tried to do it, you know, by myself with a couple of screwdrivers. I so appreciate solid wheels now. Tires about this size that are pneumatic are not going to be soaking up bumps. No, it's not really going to make a difference. So you may as well just go with the solid tires and never, ever, ever have to worry about replacing them because it's a pain. Housed within the back wheel is a 250 watt hub motor that can bring the S10 up to a top speed of around 15 miles per hour eventually exhilarating the acceleration on this scooter is very slow the top speed is kind of the standard for two years ago but i honestly wouldn't want to travel much faster on the scooter anyway just because yeah. there is no suspension whatsoever yeah every bump that this scooter hits is going straight through your skeleton and will rattle you up a bunch so yeah not not good for anything other than perfectly smooth roads or paths. But the good news is it only goes 15 miles an hour, which mm -hmm. means that you're not gonna be rattled too bad. Yeah. Um, but I do wanna stress that the acceleration is glacial. <laughs> glacial? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the build quality is not great. It rattles and shakes while riding, which could largely be this front fender that is simply not attached well. Uh, also, it's worth pointing out that if you want to tighten the attachment of this front fender, you have to take the wheel off because right. the screw is underneath the stem. Someday I will have screwdriver fingers. When that day comes, it'll be very useful. But until that day, I, this, uh, this is going to stay loose because yeah, I'm not gonna go through all the trouble of removing the whole wheel, which probably means taking off all these plastic parts and forget it. I'll just 
it'll just rattle. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, it could just be that, but I'm not entirely sure. Not everything on this scooter fits together properly, and a lot of the parts just feel kind of low quality. Another example would be the other fender, which I know you can't tell from this view, but it is warped. I think that that probably came from the injection molding process or the shipping process. Mm -hmm. um, but either way, it means that it doesn't line up over the wheel, which just doesn't look that aesthetically pleasing. The thumb levers for the throttle and braking are a bit flimsy and the fenders are far from sturdy. So there are two ways to bring this scooter to a stop. One is to push down on the regen lever, which is the red one on your left. Um, and that will use the electric motor in the rear Basically in reverse, it'll use it as a generator, which slows you down to uh, all the way almost to a stop pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. The other way to slow this scooter down is to use the stop brake. If you grew up in the 90s, you know what I'm talking about. And that also can bring the scooter to a stop. But the one thing that this scooter is missing is a hand lever brake that would actuate some kind of disc brake. While it might not sound like such a big deal, I mean, after all, you're only going 15 miles an hour, things can happen fast. And if you're not prepared to stop the scooter, if you're not prepared to jump on the back brake with all of your weight, which is basically what you have to do in an emergency, you're not going to be slowing down. I like having a handbrake where I can go like, Hoo! because that's what you're gonna be doing anyway. And if you're gonna be like, which of the two levers that feels exactly the same am I supposed to be pressing? Uh, I don't know. I mean, people get into car accidents all the time because they put the two pedals next to each other. One thing that I would have really liked to see would be an extra grip lever. That obviously would have increased the price of the scooter, so there's that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, that's just my two cents. And you know, the regen braking on the scooter is all right. I have to give it a little bit of credit. Like, it, it does a fine job. It actually brakes pretty hard for the regen braking. But yeah, like you were saying, my instinct growing up riding bikes and motorcycles is when I want to slow down, levers on the handlebars. Mm -hmm. So that goes for all the scooters. Most of the scooters that we have do have lever brakes. Um, so yeah, if I was in an emergency and I needed to slow down, that would be the first thing I'd reach for. And I would miss on this and probably careen into whatever was in front of me. The display on this scooter is fine. It shows the speed, the battery level, the ride mode, and the headlight indicator, all of which are nice and bright on a very visible top screen. So I don't really have too much to say about that. Although, if you had to guess which was the fastest speed mode, would you guess that red was the fastest or would you guess that white was the fastest or maybe the orange? White is the slowest, then orange, then red on this. So just a little confusing, but you'd get used to it after riding. The S10 features a pretty dim headlight that offers pretty poor visibility and it has a dim brake light that is not that easy to see. To its credit again though, from outside, if you're looking at the scooter, the headlight does help it to be seen somewhat. It's just not gonna project a big beam for you to like see where you're going if you're riding in the dark. There are three speed modes, and since the highest mode only goes up to 15 miles per hour, I really see no reason to bother with the slower modes unless a kid or inexperienced rider is taking the scooter for a spin. The S10 comes with a 36 volt battery. You can either get the five or 7.5 amp hour versions. The 7.5 amp hour battery offers a claimed range of 10 to 13 miles, while the five amp hour version claims six to seven and a half miles of range. Now, neither of these ranges are particularly impressive. And to be honest, I don't think I'd really wanna ride the scooter much further than those in one trip. There's no suspension, there's no sock absorption. It's gonna be a pretty uncomfortable ride. And at 15 and a half miles an hour, it's gonna take quite a while to get there. Yeah. It does fold down for easy storage and transport. And weighing in at around 26 pounds, it can be lifted into a car trunk without too much trouble. Now, one thing here is that our scooter seems to have arrived with a missing part, which means that we have this loose piece of metal uh, that we need to keep in this little segment here. And then you have this other piece. And I think that these two things are supposed to be attached to one another, but they're not. And that means that if you lost this piece, because we have almost lost this piece a number of times because it is just free floating, uh, we would not be able to lock the scooter into a riding position. Mm -hmm. Now, without that metal piece, it will still fold and you can lock the mechanism. However, if you do it without the metal piece in there, look at this stem wobble, which is not something you want on any scooter. Um, no. And I mean, I will point out that it's, it's basically just one little bump away from slipping this off and, and now you've fallen and you're dead. You're on the pavement at you're, that point. Yeah, you're um, not, not having a good day. If this is a common issue and people are getting scooters with this kind of folding mechanism set up all the time, 
make sure you hang on to that metal piece or you will be having a bad time with this scooter. Now, with that being said, we did reach out to Mega Wheels uh, just before recording this, so we don't know if they're going to respond. Uh, we'll let you know. We'll actually, we'll, we'll post a comment uh, a little bit later when we've either heard back or haven't heard back. Uh, we reached through their regular support page. So, so this is what you guys would be dealing with right. if you were to reach out to We're them. not dealing with the big wigs over at Mega Wheels. We're, <laughs> we're talking, to, you know, however you would be talking to the company if you bought the scooter and you ran into the same problem. Now the Mega Wheels S10 is a cheap scooter, plain and simple, both in price and quality. Although that I would argue that it is a bit expensive for what you get, there are more reputable brands in this same price category. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the S10 is listed at $279.99 US dollars as of writing this review, November 2021. And I'm gonna say right away that I honestly think your money would be better spent elsewhere. Keeping in mind that I don't really appreciate the company writing fake reviews with pictures that we took and sent to them because they asked us for them, this scooter is basically uh, uh, cheap. It's a great little toy. I think that if uh, maybe a 9 to 14 year old got this on Christmas morning, it would be a big hit for the day. I would not expect it to last through the summer. I don't see much use of this aside from, hey, it's a it's a step up from a Razor scooter. Yeah, It's something that would be fun to ride around. You know, you're still gonna have to be kicking it up hills. That's one thing we barely <laughs> talked about. This does not go up the slightest incline. No. 250 watts is not a lot of power. I don't even think that this has full 250 watts because I have had other electric scooters with 250 watts and they just had a little bit more oomph than this. This is not a commuter scooter because there is a place for commuter scooters that are not sexy, that are not fast and, and you know don't have too many moving parts because you don't want any of them to break. You want to get from A to B. This is not that. No. I would more recommend something like a GoTrax, which is only like 30 bucks more. And is a reputable brand that has great customer service and their products are actually good quality. We've worked with them a lot before. They make good stuff. So yeah, a brand like GoTrax or another alternative would probably be where you should put your money. But I do just wanna take a step back and use this scooter as an example of how far electric mobility has come in a very short amount of time. I mean, when I reviewed the Show Me Scooter, and that was only a couple of years ago, it basically had the same stats as this. Now it did have a handle brake, it had a little bit more power, it had an app, but not too many other features that this scooter had. But it cost $600 at the time. And now you can pick this up for less than half the price. That's amazing. That is showing where electric mobility is, is that now companies can scale up fairly inexpensive pieces of crap like this <laughs> that, um, you know, you could you could ride for some amount of time. I don't know, it's, it's amazing how far we've come in such a short period of time and it makes me really excited for what the bottom of the barrel is gonna look like in two or three years. Overall, I can't personally recommend this scooter because I've had a not so great experience with it. Maybe we just got sent a bad unit, although I kind of doubt it based on the company. Uh, but hopefully Mega Wheels can make the changes necessary to make this a scooter worth considering if you're looking for a scooter on a budget. Thank you so much for watching Now Let's Review. I hope you understand that uh, we are not always positive on the products that we review. Um, sometimes there are real losers like this one. <laughs> um, I will say though that there are so many good electric mobility oh devices that I can find so many redeeming qualities in mm -hmm. that even if, you know, oh, this isn't super smooth or this isn't super great, having something that can get you around with electric power um, that's a little bit easier than walking or running or, mm -hmm. oh, I'll just have to get in my car and drive around. Mm -hmm. I appreciate even this, even this very, very cheap scooter. Um, because it is helping to push things along and you know it is because this is now the bottom of the barrel instead of something that is absolutely horrendous and unrideable like mm -hmm. maybe a couple years ago we really are advancing where electric mobility is going and if you want to help support us you can hit the subscribe button I'm not going to teach you how the subscribe button works you already know how it works um, but it would help us out a lot because uh, then we can reach out to nicer companies than mega wheel uh, get nicer products for you to look at although we will always be reviewing the cheapest products we can find because we know that some people that's their budget mm -hmm. and uh you know i honestly would save the money 
wait another year <laughs> for something nicer to hit the market or again, go for the goat tracks. And if you guys have ideas for things that you want us to review, leave them in the comments. We're always interested to hear what you guys would be interested in us reviewing. We just reach out to as many companies as we can. We just try and get as much as we can. But if there are specifics that you would love to see us review, again, leave them in the comments. Uh, we'll see you next time. Now, now let's, let's review. review. All right, wait, stop drinking water for a <laughs> <laughs>